JMS Javira. The, the paper is on effects of storage of red blood cells and indices of red blood cells of complete blood count. The authors are JMS Javira, DD Loku Markala, MGDP Madhubashini, and D. Gunwadana from the University of Sri Javadanapura, Department of Pathology and the Department of Allied Health Sciences, Faculty of Medicine, Sri Javadnapura. I call upon JMS Jayavira to present the paper. Good morning to all of you. I'm Dr. D. Gunawadana from University of Sri Javadnapura. And uh, our paper today is on effects of storage in red cell indices of a complete blood count at different temperatures over time. So what are our objectives? First of all, we needed to clarify, we needed to study the storage effects of indices of red cell count of a complete blood count, probably one of the most important and initial, most commonly done investigations in any context, medical context today. So in uh, doing this, first of all, we needed to do two things. First of all, uh, we checked that uh, blood sample at three different temperatures, at room temperature, four degrees, which is the door, fridge door temperature, and 31, uh, the uh, average of 31 temperature, that's the room temperature. The second uh, point we needed to check was how it changes during storage time. That is, we checked at 6 hours, 24 hours, and 48 hours. So uh, this is all about aging of the sample. How can we preserve the quality of a sample uh, uh, without uh, storage effects, which is probably one of the most important things today because we see that full blood count, which is a very commonly done test, is stored at different temperatures at different time durations. The sample would have been collected during the weekend, probably on a Friday, kept on the table for two days, and it will be analyzed only on Monday, which happens very often in most of the peripheral blood collecting centers today. So we, th th uh, that is why we thought it's very important to find out, okay, can we be very safe in, you know, finalizing our result? Can we be sure that the hemoglobin is the same hemoglobin that was checked two days before? So, and also the temperature. Some just put it in the fridge, some, some just keep it on the table. So we needed to clarify whether this result is reliable. So what is the minimum time delay that can be allowed before checking a full blood count? And what is the best temperature to store it if any delay is anticipated? So what, what uh, now we did this on red cell indices. And what, what, are, what is red cell indices? Hemoglobin, all of you know, hemoglobin, full red blood cell count, and the hematocrit, which is probably an important indicator in guiding dengue treatment and uh, MCV, MCHC, and MCH, which are the red cell indices, which will again aid to your diagnosis and the red cell distribution width. So these are the seven parameters which we analyze, which is probably uh, available now for analyzer machines are available in any base hospital in Sri Lanka. So these are readily available to the clinician today. Uh, so we uh, uh, analyzed 100 two healthy individuals who came to Colombo South Teaching Hospital University Unit, and the ages were between 20 and 50, one to one female male ratio, randomly collected samples, and we took the verbal consent. And there were two independent variables, as I explained before. We checked the storage time and the storage temperature, and the dependent seven variables that I explained to you before. So what did we do? With the sample was actually collected and divided into three uh, specimens. One to be checked at air condition temperature, the second sample to be checked at room temperature, and the third sample to be checked at four degrees temperature. And each of these samples were analyzed at six hours, at 24 hours, and after 48 hours. So you see one sample was checked up 10 times at different temperatures, at different duration. So the air conditioned bottle was, uh, the aliquot was kept at, you know, for, at checked at six hours, for, uh, 24 hours, and 48 hours. So similarly, all three temperatures, uh, you know, different time durations were checked. 
and what was the sample? The routine sample for a full blood count, which is 2 ml of EDTA blood. And they were again divided into plain tubes. And we made, did serial numbers and made a note of the date of collection and the time of collection. So all the samples, the baseline measurements were performed within 30 minutes of the sample collection. And samples which represented the normal ranges were accepted. Any range that was out of the normal range was excluded from the study. And each sample was divided into three portions I explained to you before. And uh, each separated sample was stored at all three temperatures. So the, the same thing I had before. They were uh, separately checked for three different temperatures and at three different time periods actually. So this study went on to 48 hours. Uh, right, so uh, all samples were uh, reanalyzed after six hours, 24, 48 hours, checked at three different temperatures and it was assessed uh, by Sysmax, Sysmax XS500 fully automated five part hematology analyzer and data was analyzed by SPSS 17 program. The results were, uh, yeah, uh, the statistical significance of the differences between the mean values of each parameter was assessed by paired T sample test and uh, P value was 0 0.05 was considered statistically significant. So what did we find? Now you can see that uh, after, at six hours, I mean, it's a bit confusing. It's a long graph. So all these are different seven parameters that I talked about. The red cell, the hemoglobin, the hematocrit, the mean cell volume, the MCH, MCHC, and RDW. And uh, the different color codes are put for different temperatures. The green is for the air condition temperature. The room temperature is, uh, well, it's uh, um, yellow. And uh, light blue is the... Uh, 4 degrees temperature, that is the dough of the fridge. So these are the temperatures of the seven parameters. As you can see, compared to the baseline, your red line is the baseline. At six hours of keeping that in three different temperatures, you can notice that the values are were the same. So probably it's safe at six hours. You're not going to expect a big difference from the base value. What happened at 24 hours? You can see that there is deviation of only a few parameters. Your hematocrit, the mean cell volume, and the red cell distribution. Width. And you can see that at 24 hours, the hemoglobin stayed the same, which is good news because your hemoglobin is not going to change at 24 hours. So, so was the red cell count, the mean cell hemoglobin, and uh, the mean cell hemoglobin concentration. So what was the value at 48 hours? Surprisingly, hemoglobin remained unchanged, which is probably compatible with majority of data that we looked at done internationally. The hemoglobin changed the same. The red, red cell count changed the same. But unfortunately, the hematocrit changed at 48 hours. The hematocrit and the mean cell volume and the red cell distribution, which was higher than the baseline. So this is again a comparison of six hours at three different temperatures. And also I think you will notice that the four degree temperature which is depicted in the blue line somehow remains stable for all parameters. So even at 24 hours, 48 hours, uh, they remain the same, the four degree temperature. If you, if you can carefully look at this, you will notice that the blue line remain the same in all three temperatures. Yeah, so this is again to make it clear at six hours, at 24 hours, and at 48 hours, how the parameters changed, uh, you know, the seven parameters across, and the th three temperatures in uh, three different colors. 
Yes, so results and interpretation, red cell count, hemoglobin and MCH parameters were stable at all temperatures, that is at 4 degrees room temperature and air conditioned temperature up to two days, which is good news because you can collect a sample on Friday, keep it on the table, expect the hemoglobin to be normal two days after collection. So red cell count, hemoglobin, MCH remain stable at all temperatures up to two days. However, some parameters like HCT, red cell distribution with an MCV were stable only at 4 degrees up to 48 hours. The other temperatures, they showed a variation. HCT, RDW and MCV were stable at room temperature up to 6 hours. However, they were increased at air conditioned temperature at 48 hours. At 48 hours, MCH was decreased at both air conditioned and room temperature. So what's the message? Preferably, if you analyze a full blood count, do it as soon as possible. 6 hours, I would say, is the cutoff point to have a reliable result. And if you were anticipating a delay, it is advisable to store it at 4 degrees because we saw that the best temperature to store the sample at any uh, uh, temperature, uh, the best temperature was 4 degrees. And uh, therefore, it is very vital to indicate the time of the collection of the sample and date in every request form in the ward and in collecting centers. And I would like to thank the Columbus South Teaching Hospital University Unit and the um, uh, laboratory technicians who helped with the procedure and the MLS Unit, Department of Allied Health Sciences, Faculty of Medicine and EMSA Private Limited. Thank you. Now we'll go to the second paper. It's an intervention to reduce question answers later at the end. That's what they said. I also thought so, but uh, I was told that it was there. Okay. Okay. I I'm sorry, can the first presenter please come back for a question and answers? So now the paper is open for questions. Probably it could be that the mean cell volume changes. I really don't know the answer to that. It, it could be probably that the mean cell volume is important in HCT. When the cell swells up and when there are changes in the mean cell volume, the HCT could change. So that could be an explanation, but, but I'm not actually uh, very sure about it. Yes. Thank you for your presentation. It was very clear. Um, can I ask you why you chose 48 hours as the maximum? Because you talked about leaving a sample over the weekend, and 48 hours wouldn't cover the weekend, would it? Uh, sorry, if I get the question right, you're asking me why do we talk about 48 hours? Yeah, why, why not 72? Why not carry on till 72? Oh, yeah, actually, I mean, we, uh, we just couldn't carry, out, carry it out beyond uh, 48 hours, but we like to kind of extend this study to do it for a week, but we were able to do it only up to 48 hours for the simple reason that we couldn't manage beyond that. So our study didn't extend beyond 48 hours. Sorry, uh, could you clarify more? Would you say 
you couldn't manage beyond, beyond 48 hours, is that a practical reason? Yes, due to practical reasons. What, what, what is that practical reason? Uh, well, uh, we had facilities and all the facilities uh, uh, okay. to do it only for 48 hours. So we would like to extend this study further, but at the moment we could do it only up to 48 hours. Okay. So, so currently, on the basis of your work, yes. you wouldn't be able to take a sample on a Friday and analyze it on a Monday? Yes. I mean, what you're saying is... You can't do that because Saturday and Sunday is 48 hours, so if you take a sample on Friday at 12 o'clock no, and then analyze, it, then analyze it on Monday at mm -hmm. 9 o'clock, you'll have gone over your 48-hour period. Yes, uh, well, if I understand you right, what, uh, I mean, uh, what, I, what, we, uh, what we finally found was that if you collect the sample on Friday, keep it at room temperature and analyze it on Monday morning, certain values would be the same. So you could... Yeah, but you couldn't say that from this study, could you? Because you've gone over your 48-hour no. period. We have done it up to 48 hours. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. I'll stop there.